Warning, this is a serious adult-themed topic. Remember, minds like parachutes work best when open. Hey guys, it's Nate Dad. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you enjoyed your summer, back to school. My daughter's in high school. Uh, she's a freshman this year. And uh, one of her class projects, she's having to talk about school shootings. And consequently, that's opened up some conversation for us. But as she was going over it, some of the information she had wasn't accurate. And so I felt this is probably a big enough topic and a serious enough topic to just talk about and bring to light. It's a problem and it's a reoccurring issue. But it's a bigger picture than just talking about school shootings. Because ultimately it's talking about about guns, it's talking about mental health, it's talking about bullying and personal responsibility and all those avenues. So I want to talk about that a little bit and bring to light some issues and some points. So bear with me, let's talk about it. We've all seen the video footage taken from one incident or another. Collectively, there's varying degrees of anger, sadness, and frustration, with the final question being, how do we stop this? How can we keep this from ever happening again? Obviously, to solve any problem with any kind of certainty, one must first investigate the evidence. After nearly 40 years of documentation, there's a ton of information available to help determine not only the likely root of the problem, but also the ingredients needed in order to manufacture this type of deranged person. First, the problem. Recently, the Center for Homeland Defense and Security started to gather information from the 1,414 incidents on school grounds concerning guns. On their website, they state, the K-12 school shooting database documents each and every instance a gun is brandished, is fired, or a bullet hits school property for any reason, regardless of the number of victims, time of day, or day of the week. So here's the thing. If we're going to take every one of those events into consideration. We're going to take murder-suicides that's a love pact into consideration. We're going to take any time a bullet uh, fell and broke a window when somebody was shooting them off at New Year's Eve. Or We're also going to take into consideration any time a kid showed up at school and showed somebody a gun, whether it was loaded or not, but it was never fired. That's part of that. And if you think about it, that kind of skews the evidence in a way that doesn't really give us a real picture. So once we count out all the fluff, we can see that in the last 40 years that there have been 164 active school shooting incidents. If you desire, read their methods to determine how they define actual school shootings. That being said, 164 is 164 too many. What can we learn from a brief review of their findings about the type of people who would do these evil things? Well. 156 of these events were undertaken by males. 155 of these events were done alone. Roughly 80% of the time, the guns used were stolen from home or someone they knew. They mostly occur inside the school itself. 128 were current or former students. And we know that in the last 20 years, nearly all of these boys were from fatherless homes with no real religious beliefs to speak of. So what do we know from all this? We know that they're usually single boys, the ages of 15 to 18. They're in schools that they're familiar with, inside and out. They have used stolen firearms. They have no father figure in their life. They have no concept of God. So how do we fix it? So now we talk solution. There are two loud trains of thoughts as to what the solution is. Let's look at the first and seemingly the loudest idea which is to eliminate the accessibility to the guns, specifically semi-automatic military-grade rifles. Do we have information concerning the specific types of weapons used? Absolutely. Of the 164 active school shootings in the last 40 years, 24 were with rifles. Can we get more specific? Yes. Seven were with either an AR-15 or an AK-47. Now, these are only the confirmed incidents, one-third are unknown, and again, these numbers are from 1970 all the way to now. The second proposed solution is to add gun laws to the books. So, what about gun laws and background checks? Keep in mind, only law-abiding citizens follow gun laws. 
While some people argue over the exact number of laws, rules, and regulations being as high as 60,000 across federal, state, and county jurisdictions, others will say that realistically that number is about 5,000 from state to state on average, including the federal laws that still have jurisdiction, with the lowest number you'll hear being about 850. So let's go with that lowest number. If each of these individuals was prepared and willing to break 10 laws of the 850 on the books to carry out their evil acts, do you really think adding another 20 laws will be an effective deterrent? What about background checks? Did you know that in order to legally purchase a firearm from a legal dealer, you must already pass an FBI background check? While this only accounts for 78% of the gun sales in America, the remainder is, again, criminals do not follow laws. Do we believe that the only way to purchase a gun is through legal means? I mean, we have had a war on drugs going on since 1971, and we are currently talking about an opioid crisis. If drugs are illegal, how do we have this problem? Because criminals don't care about the laws. They will smuggle or steal whatever they need or want. Now understand, I do believe that some laws are in perfect working force, and background checks are, by and large, a good idea. But they are not the solution. They won't stop this from occurring again. Then we fall back to, what is the solution? How do we fix this problem? First and foremost, you got to understand that we're dealing with people who are not going to obey the laws. They do not follow the laws, A, and B, they don't care about life. So what can we do right now to take care of this problem? The first thing necessary to eliminate school shootings is to eradicate gun-free zones. According to the Crime Prevention Research Center, between 1915 and 2018, 97.8% of all mass public shootings occurred in gun-free zones. 97.8%. Similarly, in the 20 states that allow teachers to be armed, there have been no school shootings, as well as no accidents or injuries caused by firearms possessed by teachers. Once you've eliminated all gun-free zones, the second step is to put good guys with guns into those zones. And what that means is you don't have to necessarily arm every teacher, but any teacher and every teacher that wants to be trained should be trained with weapons. They should understand exactly what they're doing. They should be given a, a safe or a lock to be able to keep it on site and secure and controlled. And they should be confident and capable with that firearm. But again, if you don't want to carry a gun, by all means, don't carry a gun. You don't like the idea of having teachers with guns? Well, what about retired veterans or retired policemen? Already trained and capable and competent and would love the job of protecting kids. Long term, we must work to change the hearts and minds of the men growing up in our nation. We have to stop telling them that being a boy is a problem that masculinity in its true form is wrong. We have to remind them that characters like selflessness, honor, and integrity are of great value. We have to teach them that upright men are of utmost importance to a free society. That instead of following a path that may lead them into becoming wolves, that there is a greater honor in being the protector of the flock, their family. We need to remind them that they were created by a loving God with a purpose greater than the difficulties that come with the teenage years. And it all starts with the fathers of today, the capable men walking around who understand the value of every life and show respect and compassion to those who are less fortunate. They show mercy to those who are misguided and lost on the wrong path. This is the path to eliminating school shootings altogether, forever. And this is the path to healing our nation. Now I know what you're thinking, after a speech like this, is Nate Dad running for office or something? I'm not, but I'm passionate about two things. Loving God and loving others. And school shootings are a problem, and it's a heart problem. It's not a gun problem. A gun is a tool no different than a hammer or a car or a rock. Love you guys, and I hope you understand that the truth sometimes is difficult to bear and sometimes to swallow, but I want you to process all that I put before you. Don't just take my word on it. Do your own research. And don't trust the first link that you find on the Internet. Do some research. Do some digging. Because the facts are out there. The truth is out there. You just got to look for it.